Shalom, shalom, shalom to the whole house of Yasharal scattered to the four corners of the earth. Peace and blessings, family. I trust that the Most High has kept you, brought you to this hour so that he can receive glory off your life. Hallelujah. We're here to glorify him, the Most High. We're here to glorify him, the eternal one, hallelujah, who has kept us even from the time of our ancestors up until now. Hey. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, family, we're going to get started in this lesson. I'm excited to bring it to you. Mm -hmm. um, some things that I have observed since my awakening that the Most High has been pressing into my spirit and giving me answers to questions Hallelujah, that I've had for a while. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you. We thank praise you. We magnify Hallelujah. and we glorify you, the one true and living God. Yes. Beside Hallelujah. you, there is no L. There is no Alua. Oh, Father, we give you praise for preserving us, for keeping us, regulating our minds, Father, healing our bodies. Father, we yes. thank you. We praise you that you are defeating our enemies, that you are making a way when there seems to be no way, that you are manifesting your glory upon your people, your chosen one. They are appointed for this hour, Father, to be a dispensation of your power. And we give you praise and we give you honor and we magnify your magnificent name. Hallelujah. In the name of Yahusha Hamashiach, we pray and we give thanks. And all the saints of the Most High Yah said, amen. amen and amen. Well, saints, we've been seeing a lot of things take place in these last few weeks. And everybody is anticipating the things that are coming here in April and beyond. But we are a people that are being prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. We have been betrothed to the Most High Yah. We have a duty to him and him alone. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. And he is the one who has called Thank us you. out. Thank he you. is the one who has set us apart. He is the one who has made us high above all yes. nations of the earth to be the head and not the tail first and not last above and never beneath this is the calling that the most high has put on our lives and we have experienced trials and tribulations like no other people we've been tested to the breaking point like no other people we've been pushed past the point of no return, like no other people. No other yes. people on the yes. planet would yes. have faced and gone through the things that we have gone through and still come out and have half a half a righteous mind. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Most peoples of the earth would have rebelled and revolted a long time ago, but the Most High has had us humbly enduring our chastisement, but now is the time of our restoration. Mm. Hallelujah. Now is the time that we are going to be restored to our land, to our honor, to our riches. Everything that was stolen is going to be returned to oh, us yes. manifold yes. times. Hallelujah. So as we get into this study, I wanted to talk about the things that I've been seeing and how ministries that I'm aware of, that I'm familiar with, that I enjoy, have been attacked, mm -hmm. have been assaulted. And we have to get back to the root of the thing. Why are we being attacked like no other people on the planet? Hallelujah. Why do we come into this world with a target painted on our back? Why do we have this stigma that any and everyone can misuse us and abuse us with no consequence? Right. Well, family, let's get into it. Let's get into this. Psalms chapter two. And I'm going to begin reading at verse number one, and we're going to read through verse number 12. And we're going to pick out some things as we go along. I don't have my, my lovely wife, my executive producer today, so I'm going to be doing a lot of reading 
So those of you who are in the chat, if you can post the scriptures for me, I would appreciate that. So we're going to do Psalms chapter two, verses one through 12. And it reads, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings yeah. of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Yahuwah and against his Mashiach saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sits in the heavens shall laugh. Yahuwah shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath. This is what's happening right now. And vex them in his sore displeasure. He's displeased with how they have treated his chosen people his set apart people, his holy ones, the apple of his eye. He set us here to be a message in the midst of this mess. Mm. He set us to be a light in the midst of this darkness. Mm. We were supposed to be that beacon, that shining city set on a hill for the nations. And the Most High says the way that they have treated us is in his sore displeasure. Mm. He said he will yet... Verse six, he says, yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Mm -hmm. And I will declare at the decree. The king is going to decree something here. Yahuwah has said unto me, you are my son. This day I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the heathen for your inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and shall dash them into pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve Yahuwah with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. What was this all about? Why were the heathen so hostile? Why were they raging? The scripture says because they rejected him. They rebelled against him. They revolted against him. Who? His anointed one. They didn't want anything to do with his anointed one. Well, his anointed one came from out of the midst of an anointed people a people that the Most High had selected to be kings and to be priests. He anointed them to be kings and priests. And out of our midst came the King of Kings. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And they were rejecting him. They didn't want his restraints, his laws to regulate their sinful, perverse behavior. So they rejected it. What are they doing today? They reject his people. They reject his word. Come on, saints. They don't want us to say anything about the alphabet soup community. They don't want us to say anything about perverse behaviors, speaking, acting, doing. Come on. They don't want you to say anything. Just be quiet and let us do what we want to do. And if you speak up and say anything about it, you become their enemy because Hallelujah. you tell them the truth. Hallelujah. It's about the anointing. The assault is about the anointing, the anointed one, the Mashiach. And he dwells in us, in his people. Yah is in the midst of his people. He's not in the midst of the heathens. Or why is he speaking to the heathens like this if he's in their midst? If he has chosen them and appointed them the way he has appointed you, the, 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 the evil one always fights against the one uh -huh. that the Most High has appointed to rule. All right. And that's the recurring theme that we're going to see throughout these scriptures. Hmm. All right, let's move. Let's go on to the book of Exodus, chapter 30. And let's pick up at verse number 31, Exodus 30 and 31. All right. And it reads. And you shall speak unto the children of Yasharal, saying, this shall be a holy anointing oil unto me throughout 
your generations. Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured, neither shall you make any other like it. After the composition of it, it is holy and it shall be holy to you. So what is he saying? It's not supposed to be for common use. Mm -hmm. You can't just go pick out the anointing oil and put it on yourself. You receive the anointing from the most high. It's not supposed to be something like your daily cologne or your lotion. It's not supposed to be made common. Why? Because a holy thing is unique. It's different. It's set apart for his holy purpose and holy use. What are we? Set apart people. Set apart for what? His holy purpose. What's his holy purpose? To fulfill what he spoke to our father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Come on. And so he says, when I anoint you, it's not a common thing. And it should not be looked down upon or belittled in your eyes or any other eyes. It's a special anointing. Mm -hmm. Because it's a special anointing. Why? Because you're a special people. If you weren't special, you didn't need a special anointing. If you weren't supposed to be different, you wouldn't need an anointing to make you different. Come on, somebody. You wouldn't need to be called out if you weren't going to be different. The calling that he put on you, the anointing that he put on you was to make you different, to make you above Mm -hmm. and not beneath, to make you the head, not the tail. What has the world tried to do? Make you the tail, not the head, to put you down and not up. Come on, somebody. The enemy will always fight what the anointing was put in your life to do. The anointing attracts, attacks. This is what we have not fully understood. Why am I going through so much? Why am I always fighting a battle? Why am I always being come to come against? Why, why, why? We always wonder. Because you were anointed. The anointing attracts the enemy. Because the anointing is put on you to deliver you and to deliver those around you. And the enemy is not interested in anyone being delivered. Mashiach came to bring life. The enemy comes to bring death. Hmm. Mashiach wants to prosper you. The enemy wants to impoverish you. Mashiach wants to heal you. The enemy wants to have you sick. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you, family? Everything that the Most High has purposed for you, the enemy comes against to prevent. Mm-hmm. And if he can't block it, he will try to get you to defile yourself, to pollute yourself so that you dilute the anointing that's on your life and thereby make yourself unclean and unworthy of what the Most High has called you to. It's that simple. Most High wants you to keep your hands clean so he can keep giving you things that he promised you. But he already told us, don't give that which is clean to those things which are unclean. Don't cast your pearl before us. Come on, swine. Don't give that which is holy to who? To the dogs. So he's got to keep us from being doggish and living piggish lives so that he can continue to be a blessing that he was to Abraham, that he was to Isaac, that he was to Jacob. Come on. That he wants to be to you. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go. On. Uh, Exodus chapter 40 and verse number nine. Exodus 40 and verse nine. I'm turning my own pages today, family. I, so y'all gonna have to just bear with me. All right, let's go to verse number nine. And it says, and you shall make the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle that is therein and all that is therein and shall hallow it, make it holy, make it holy and all the vessels thereof and it shall be holy. What set apart for the most high's purpose? Well, the most high's purpose was to get us into worshiping him in a set apart, unique, distinct fashion. That's why he says, don't learn the way of the heathen. They don't know the way. Salvation is of the Yahudim. 
He said, you're supposed to be setting the standard. You're supposed to be leading in worship, not them. All right. Leviticus chapter eight. Leviticus chapter eight, verses 10 through 12. Are you with me? It says, and Moshe took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and all that was therein and sanctified it. He set it apart. And he sprinkled thereof upon the altar seven times and anointed the altar and all the vessels, both the laver and his foot to sanctify them. So what was the anointing to do? Sanctify you. What's the most highest purpose in our lives? To sanctify us. He wants to sanctify your mind by giving you his word. That's why he wants us to meditate it on it day and night. A lot of the thoughts that we have and the processes that we have would cease if we were to meditate on this word day and night. Put it to the test. See if he will not. If he won't perform it, if his word doesn't perform, if his word doesn't work, then he ain't who he says he is. Put me to the test, the Most High said. Prove me. See if I won't. Oh, yeah. That's why he says set these things apart. Everything that has to do with you and your worship should be set apart, should be holy. What your song to him should be holy. Your prayer to him should be holy. Your words and the words of your mouth and the meditation of your heart ought to be, come on, saints, set apart. We ain't satisfied with the heathen's way of doing things. We're not satisfied living like pagans, like pigs, like swine. Come on, we're not satisfied living like dogs with no moral standard. We're not satisfied just being like everybody else because we ain't. We ain't like everybody else. They've been trying to convince you for millennia that you are just like us. You need to be like us, conform to be like us. And what we're saying to them, mm -mm, no, no, no. We are called out ones. We are set apart ones. We don't live like you because we ain't like you. Hallelujah. So when the anointing comes, it comes to empower. It doesn't come just to give you the identity comes to empower you. It is the Ruach of the Most High in your life that empowers you to do everything. I said everything that he commanded for you to do. There is nothing that he has said to us that we cannot do if we walk in the spirit, if we walk in the Ruach, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's just choosing the way we walk and who we walk with. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The way we walk and who we walk with. Hey, that's what the most high is concerned about when he put the anointing on you. He said, I want you. I don't want you to walk like the heathen. I don't want you to act like the heathen. I don't want you to think like the heathen. I don't want you to speak like the heathen. I don't want you to dress like the heathen. I don't want you to eat mm -hmm. what the heathens eat because it's unclean. And it will defile you and it will separate you from your Elohim. No, right. And your Elohim won't be able to do for you the things that he wants to do for you. Come on, say amen. Hey. So he goes on. Let's go to First Chronicles chapter 16. Got a lot of script to cover today, so I'm going to be moving quickly. As quickly as my little... Fingers can turn the page. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First Chronicles chapter 16. And we're going to pick up at verse 15 through 22. First Chronicles 16 verses 15 through 22. Are you with me, fam? All right. So he says, be mindful always of his covenant. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, even the covenant which he cut with Abraham and his oath to Yitzhak, Isaac, and has confirmed the word to Yaakov for a law 
and to Yasharal for an everlasting covenant, saying unto you, saying unto who, saying unto you, saying unto who, saying unto you, I will give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance when you were but few, even a few and strangers in it. And when they went from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not mine anointed, touch not mine anointed, touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Well, who's he said? He said the anointed ones were you. So when he says, touch not mine anointed, a lot of preachers, come on, a lot of preachers, pastors, evangelists, you've heard them say it. When, when they get caught up wrong or somebody comes at them and with, in a way they feel is disrespectful, they say, now remember, touch not mine anointed. Do my prophets no harm. It's not even talking about them. He said who he was talking about. He said he ran down the list. He said Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Yasharal. Who is he talking to? Who is his anointed? Who did the Most High say, don't touch the apple of my eye? That was Yasharal. He was not talking about these pagan prophets, pastors, preachers, and teachers. He wasn't referring. This didn't apply to them. It applied to those who had the promise. Mm -hmm. No. Uh -oh. that, 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 that's not a defense for them. He said it was for you. They take scripture and they take it out of context. They apply scripture where it doesn't apply. Mm -hmm. And the Most High said, well, let's bring it back to the truth. Who was this about? It was about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Yashara, his anointed ones. They were anointed. They were set apart mm -hmm. for the purpose of the Most High. What was that purpose? To show who is the true King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Who is the Most High? Who is the Most High? Who is the everlasting? Who is the one true Elohim? That's who he said, I'm, I'm using Yashara to show the world who I am by the things that I do for them, the promises that I keep for them. And if you mess with them, you touch the apple of my eye. This is why he promised Yahshua. He said, if they will come at you one way, but they will flee from you seven ways. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So he says to you, you are the anointed ones. You are the ones that I told people don't mess with. And who have they messed with? The anointed ones. Why? Because the anointing attracts the attack. The, the enemy sees that the Most High has selected you, chosen you, called you out. Why? To destroy his kingdom. To tear down everything that Satan has tried to build in our world that was promised to us. I know y'all ain't hearing me today. All right, let's go on. Isaiah chapter 10. Verse 27. Isaiah chapter 10. And verse 27. And here he talks about the anointing that lifts burdens and destroys the what? The yoke. The yoke that's on who? His people. That's why the enemy doesn't want you to walk in your anointing. That's why the enemy wants to talk you into doing things the way the heathens do. Because that makes you as common as they are. Mm -hmm. But he said at this, there's a time when the anointing will lift the burden and will destroy the yoke that's on your neck. The yoke of bondage. Bondage to what? Not bondage to the law. Bondage to sin. Sin is transgression of the law. He said, I'm trying to break you away from the yoke of sin, not the yoke of the law. 
Why does the Bible speak against the lawless one? Because he's lawless. Mm. And he wants everyone to be lawless. But the most high chose you, set you apart to say, walk in the light of my law and show these lawless ones the benefit of walking with me, the blessedness of walking with the most high in harmony with him. Are you listening to me, saints? This is what the most high has purposed for us and called us out from the path that we were on. Come on. So that we would be on a different path. Don't tell me that we're walking a different path and you are doing everything that the world is doing. I'm marching to the beat of a different drummer, pastor. Come on. All right, Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah 61 and verse 1. Somebody drop that in the chat. <laughs> Isaiah 61, verse 1. And here he says, the spirit of the Most High, the spirit of Yahuwah is upon me. He has anointed me. What? Isaiah, what? He has anointed me. What? That means he has something for me to do. He didn't call folks to be do nothings in the kingdom. We want to be part of the royal family, but we got to be about our father's business. He's in the business of saving, the business of healing, the business of blessing, the business of restoring. Come on. And if there's somebody who's not about that business, they ain't part. This is all about the anointing that he put on you to lift burdens and destroy yokes, to bring a message in the midst of this mess that we're living in, the alphabet mess, the gender dysphoria mess, this, this infidelity mess, this wayward children mess. It's a mess. We all know it's a mess, but we still gotta bring the message. He anointed us to bring this message. And it wasn't just to talk this message. It was to walk this message. We don't just tell people, you need to be holy as he is holy. We are living holy. We're showing you it can be done. We're living set apart. We don't have to go where they go. We don't have to do what they do. We don't have to talk like they talk. We don't have to walk like they walk. We're nothing like them. And we're setting a standard. We're setting a distinction. We're making a division between that which is clean and that which is unclean. How are they going to know unless we show? If salvation is of the Yahudim, how are they going to ever know if we don't show them that we are anointed? When you get anointed, it ain't just about shouting. It's not just about I speak in tongues. I have these gifts of the spirit. No, show me you can live holy. That's that's the anointing. It's a holy anointing so you can live. Oh, my, my, my. It's a holy anointing so you can live holy. All that other stuff is peripheral. All that other stuff is, is just stuff that come along with it. It's like the parsley on the plate. It's not the main course. The main course is holiness unto Yahuwah. Holiness to our Elohim. My, my, my. That's what we were called to. And that's the light that the world needs to see. Not just the people like in Christendom that can get up and preach and teach and then still not live it. Right. Come on. They can talk a good talk. 
but they ain't walking a good walk. They walk in raggedy, they walk in reckless. Come on, we don't want to set that example. We don't want to set that standard in the midst of the assembly. This is why they will come to the knowledge that their fathers have inherited lies. That his commandments are not grievous, they're not burdensome. His yoke is easy, his burden is light. My, my, my. Oh, yes. Ooh, hallelujah. 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 The anointed one. The enemy fears it. He dreads it when you have the anointing and you're walking in that anointing and you won't let him defile it. You won't let him pollute it. Hey. You won't dilute it. You won't water it down. You won't sugarcoat it. Come on. You just come straight up in your face. This is the truth. Do with it what you will. My responsibility is not to make people do it. My responsibility is to tell people you can do it. Hey. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, yeah. My, my, my. All right, let's go. Um, Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. And we see this same thing carried through to our Messiah, through our Messiah. It's that same anointing. It attracted the attack in his people. It's going to attract the attack in Mashiach himself. Look at verse number 18. Are you with me? It says, the Ruach Adonai Yahuwah is upon me because why? He has anointed me to what? Preach the Basora, the gospel, the good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to who? The captives, to recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. He said, this anointing that's on me has a purpose. The anointing that is upon me has a purpose. It's to preach deliverance to those who are captive, not just physically captive and incarcerated. That, yes, that, that's included. But some people are captive to sin. Some people are captive to habits. Come on, somebody. And he said that anointing is to set them free and to recover their sight. There are people that are spiritually blind and physically blind. And the anointing is there to what? Lift the burden and destroy the yoke. Are you lifting burdens? Hey. Are you being a burden? Hey, on, Are you man. destroying yokes? Are you putting yokes on people? Hello. Are you opening blind eyes? Or are you blinding their eyes? Hallelujah. Are you telling them you don't have to do that law? You don't have to live that holy? Hey. It's all been done. Jesus did it all. Mm. Nothing for you to do. No living to be done. Just go have fun. Enjoy your life. Have Live your best life now. Hey. No, my best life is already being lived by living holy and living unto the Most High Yah. I no longer live, the scripture says, I no longer live, but he lives. And because he lives in me, I know that I'm going to live with him throughout all eternity. That's the key. We deny the flesh because the flesh wants to get you out of your anointing. Because it's going to do things that will defile you to make you unclean. Now, now, just because, let me let me break this down. Just because you get unclean, don't think that you're a castaway, it's all over, woe is me. The scripture had provision that if a person became unclean, there were things that were prescribed for them to do to get back into a state of cleanliness, to get back into a state of holiness. And as long as we follow that prescription, we can get back. But what the Most High is saying, don't keep going back into something that you know is derailing your destiny, that is denying things that I promised to you. Remember, the scripture says your iniquities have separated you. Oh, yeah. 
We don't want to live separated. Do, does the branch want to live separated from the vine? That's doom. That's death. He is life. As long as we're connected to him, we have it. Oh, yes. When we separate from him, we don't. The enemy is trying to break the bond, to break the connection that the anointing has created between us and Yahuwah. So we see it happening through the old, all the way up through the new. The Most High said it's the same attack. The enemy sees the anointing is on you, that you're coming into your identity, knowing who you are, what your purpose is, and that anointing is activating. And as it activates, it has you preaching the gospel. It has you preaching the basura, the good news. It has you opening blind eyes. It has you setting captives free, people that are captive to religion. Come on, somebody. Stuck in churches, stuck on stupid, doing the same thing year after year after year after year and never seeing manifestation. Same place, same thing. They need to break out of prison. They need to break out of this conformity that the enemy has them stuck in and be transformed by the renewing of their mind. Yes, hallelujah. First Samuel. Let's take it back. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. I know a lot of Israelite ministries that are anointed for this truth and they're coming under attack. And it seems ridiculous. The attack seems ridiculous. Like why? If what, if what I'm saying is so wrong and so foolish, what, why the attack? Why the attack? Why the assault on my character? Why the assault? Come on now. The enemy's not attacking something that's not a threat to him. If you're not a threat to him, he ain't bothered with you. But the greater the anointing is on your life, the greater the attack is going to be on your life. Hello. Mm -hmm. So don't think it's strange. Peter tried to warn us. No. Don't think it's strange. You're not amongst friends. You're in the midst of your enemy's camp. And he don't want you to realize that you don't have to be held captive. What? I don't have to be subject to this sin. I don't have to be subject to to these habits that are displeasing to the most. I don't have to kowtow to people. I don't have to be in fear of men and their opinions. I don't have to be a men pleaser. I don't have, I don't, what? I'm free? If the sun has set you free, you are free indeed. All right, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. It says, then... Shemuel, Samuel, took the horn of the oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Ruach, Yahuwah, came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. He anointed David. Now we're going to see the manifestation of the attack. Mm -hmm. You see the anointing. You see the attack. You see the anointing. You see the attack. Come on, somebody. He anointed you. Are you seeing the attack? Mm -hmm. Are you seeing the enemy come against you? Are you getting resistance from all places, from north, south, east, and west? Mm -hmm. Yes, you are. Second Samuel chapter 5. Second Samuel chapter 5. And I'm going to read verse 7 through 9. And also, we're going to read verses 17 through 25. 7 through 9, seven through nine and 17 through 25. Amen. Mm -hmm. He says, Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, the same as the city of David. 
And David said on that day, whosoever gets up to the gutter and smites the Yebusim, he says, the lame and the blind that are hated of David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Wherefore they said, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. So David dwelt in the fort and called it the city of David. And David built round about from Milo and inward. Jump down to verse 17 through 29. David took Jerusalem. He fought for, he fought for, he fought for the city of peace. He fought to have peace. Come on. You have to fight to have peace. You have to go to war to have peace. That's why the anointing is on you. Your, the anointing is on you to fight the good. Come on. The anointing is on you to fight the good fight. There's no fight the, the what I was gonna say losing loss loss losing you, you 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 can't you can't be in the anointing and wanting to lose to your flesh to the world to ha satan if that anointing is on you it doesn't want to lose ever this is why Joshua cried when he lost the battle of AI he cried he wept before Yahuwah what's going on you promised why? That was the anointing you put on us. It was a winner anointing. It was a victor anointing. It was a conqueror anointing. So why am I losing? He said, well, there's a problem. There's sin in the camp. If you're losing. There's a problem. There's sin in the camp. Come on. All right, let's get down to verse 17. See, but when the Philistines heard that they had anointed who? David. When the Philistines heard, they had anointed who? David. When the Philistines, the enemy heard, come on somebody. When the enemy heard, when the enemy saw that you were anointed to be king over Yasharal, the Philistines came to seek David. And David heard of it and he went down to the hole. David went down into his strong place. He went and hid in Yahuwah his fortress and mighty tower. See, where do you go for refuge? You might be anointed, but you're going to have to run sometime and hide sometime. Come on. And you better run to the right place. You can't run to the bar. You can't run to the honky tonk. You can't run into the arms of some man or some woman. Come on, somebody. You can't run to the blunt. You can't run to the pill bottle. Somebody need to say amen. You can't run to those things for refuge. They are no refuge. Our refuge is in Yah. He says, run to me. Come to run to me. Hide in me. Show me that you trust me more than you trust that, the liquor cabinet. Then you trust the blunt. Then you trust those pills that ain't changed nothing. When you, when you come down from being high, you still got the same problem. When you climb out of bed with that person, you still got the same problem. You might have even compounded the problem. Yeah. Now you got more problems. Hallelujah. Ah. Hey, my, 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 my. Oh, Lord, mm. Yah is good. Yah is good. Hallelujah. Ooh. All right. Come on. Come on. Let me go. Let me go. Where am I? The enemy saw that David was anointed. That became a problem for the enemy because the enemy knows that the anointing only comes if the Most High has a purpose for your life. And the Most High is all about what? That you have life and have it more abundantly. I am come that you might have life. I'm come that you might have the blessings, the good things that I promised your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The enemy doesn't want you to have it. So he goes into a prevent defense. He puts strongholds all the way up to the promised land. These strongholds were to keep you out, to prevent you from going in. But the anointing that's on you was supposed to destroy the yoke and lift the burden. That's why the enemy doesn't want you to live right. He doesn't want you to live holy. He doesn't want you to abide by Yah's commandments. He doesn't want you to live like Yah said live. 
Why? Because then he can keep you out. You got no power. Your anointing mm-hmm. is dead. It's been caused to be dormant. Come on now, speak to yourself. Oh, wow. I am an anointed one of the most high Yah. I am appointed for an hour such as this. I have the power to do all that he commanded me to do. See, if you start talking crazy like that, then the the enemy is going to start sitting up, taking notice, saying, who is this? Who is this talking crazy in my kingdom? Who is this talking about overthrowing me and binding me and casting me out? Hallelujah. The Philistines also came and spread themselves in the Valley of the Raphaim. We're here because the Valley of the Raphaim was the the descendants of the giants, the Nephilim. They had Nephilim DNA. They had their fallen angel DNA. Satanic DNA. They were in conspiracy. They were in cahoots with the same fallen ones to stop the plan and the purpose of the most high Yah in your life. So what did they do? He said, well, he promised them Canaan. So we're going to go over here and camp out in Canaan. We're going to put giants here. We're going to put the descendants of the Nephilim here. Powerful beings here, strong beings here. Why? To stop these other beings to prevent them from inheriting the promise. Come on now. To prevent them from getting to where the Most High says we're supposed to get. To the head, not the tail, not the back of the bus. Come on. Not not a servant. He said we're supposed to be the master. That's ha- that has to transpire. Well, it only it's only going to transpire for those who are walking in this anointing. It's not going to happen for those who are not walking in this anointing. We see what happens to the rebels. Right. We see what happens to the wicked. Mm. All right. So it's in the Raphaim, the Raphaim, verse 19, it says, and David inquired, of Yahuwah. What? The enemy. Hmm. David took the city. He took Jerusalem. He took the city of peace. And the enemy heard that he got anointed to be king. They said, we can't have this. <laughs> An anoint- a king will lead them to victory. He was a type of Mashiach. He was a type of Yahusha HaMashiach. So when they heard that he had been anointed to be king, that Saul and David were no longer going to be fighting one another. Listen, Saul and David were no longer having a civil war. They were now going to be united. Come on, Israel. Come on, Yasharal. He said that now they were going to be united. There's no more civil war going on. They're going to be united against the enemy. So they came to seek David. Why? Because David had the anointing. If you have an anointing, the enemy is seeking you. When the scripture says he goes to and fro, what? Seeking. He's looking for anyone who's anointed who might become a problem. All right. Okay. So David inquired of Yahuwah. What did he do? He sought Yahuwah. He looked for the word of the Most High. What is he saying to you in the midst of this battle, in the midst of this challenge to your anointing? Come on, somebody. In the midst of your challenge, who do you run to? Who do you listen? Oh, my, my, my. Who do you run to? Who do you listen to? You listening to that person telling you about marriage advice and they ain't got a man, they ain't got a woman. Or them, their marriage is a mess and you listening to their advice. You listening to the drug dealer telling you how to come on somebody. You listen to everything and everyone. So many voices that want your ear. But the scripture says, my sheep hear my voice. So David, even though David was a shepherd, he had a shepherd. Even though David was a king, 
He had a king. Right. Y'all not hearing me. Hallelujah. He had the king of kings. Y'all don't get this. Israel was anointed to be kings and priests, but we have a, come on, we have a king. Yes. Yes. We have a king over all the kings, mm -hmm. all the royal house. Oh. Mm. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. All right. Shall I go up to the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And Yahuwah said to David, go up, for I will doubtless, without a doubt, without question, I will deliver them into your hand. And David came to Baal, Perasim, and David smote them there and said, Yahuwah has broken forth upon my enemies. Upon who? My enemies. Because your enemies are Yah's enemies. That's why you see what's happening in the world happening. Because these people were your enemies. You're not amongst friends. Mm. The, hey. Friends don't enslave friends. Friends don't <laughs> unalive friends. Friends don't put crack in friends' communities. Hello? Friends don't mass incarcerate other friends. Come on, saints. Mm. You're not amongst friends. You have one friend. His name is Yah. He said, I'll be a friend that's six closer than what? Than a brother. You need friends? I'll be, I'll be your friend. You need a counselor? I'll be your counselor. Wonderful counselor. If you need an L, you need a mighty one? I'm a mighty L, a mighty God. What do you need? He's, I'll be that to you. But don't let the enemy Hallelujah. defile your anointing. You've been anointed and appointed to dethrone the God of this world. You've been anointed and appointed to free the captives that he has taken captive. Yes. So who do we consult? Mm. Who do we go to for counseling? Who do we go to for our battle strategy? We go to the Most High. He's the king Hallelujah. over all of us Yasharal kings. All of us royal house. He's, he's the king over us. Just because we have authority, we don't have all authority. He has all authority. We have knowledge, but he has all knowledge. We have wisdom, but he has all wisdom. So we go to the rock that's higher than I. We go to the one who's Hallelujah. mightier than we are. And he will give us the victory. Oh, yes. Why? Because we have been anointed by him. And mm -hmm. Satan cannot stop what the Most High has put forth and put in motion in us. These nations have conspired, the scripture says. And, and it, even if they're not part of the Raphaim or the fallen ones, they're co-conspirators. They're all conspiring against one people. Why is it that any nation you go into, they all have the same attitude against us? It's not a skin thing. It's a DNA. We have Abba Yah's DNA. We are his firstborn. My, my, my. All right, all right. Mm. Okay, let me let me let me finish. Wish I had my reader here today. I miss my sweetheart. Um, That's all right. He said he, he struck my enemies. Verse twenty one. He says, and there he left him, he left their images, and David and his men burned them. All these false images, hmm. these false gods, because the scripture says you should have no other. Elohim, no other gods before him. What do we do with them? He says, you burn them up. If it's in your, your promised place, you destroy these pagan images. White Jesus, destroy the pagan images. Church, destroy the pagan image. All these things were established, set up by pagans. And we followed suit because we didn't know no better. But now we know better. We do better. We don't keep walking in the lie. We don't keep walking in the delusion. We don't keep walking in the confusion. We don't keep doing what they do just so we can get along and be accepted. 
because we were put on this planet and anointed by the most high yes, to yes. be separate, to be called out, to be di distinct and different, not to be engaged and entangled as Paul told Timothy. Don't get entangled with all this foolishness. Hallelujah. Remember what you're here for. Remember why you were called. And when you're attacked, remember why you're being attacked. Mm -hmm. Because if the enemy didn't see you as a threat, he wouldn't bother you. Amen. Amen. He would keep it pushing. It says, and the Philistines came yet again. They did what? They came yet again. You just thought, I didn't want a great victory. I didn't defeated you. I've destroyed your false images. And here you are back again. Isn't that the, how the devil moves? Isn't that the way his people move? They leave you alone for a while, but they're coming back because you're not amongst friends. Some of the battles you fought last year, you will fight again this year. Some of the battles you fought five years ago, you will fight again this year. Why? Because the enemy not going to give up just because he lose a battle. Hey, this battle is to the death. Come on, somebody. Yes. I'll Paul said, now, now I'm ready. I'm ready to be offered up. I fought the good fight. I finished the course. When it's over, when Yah says it's over, you fight to the last, to your last breath. You declare the goodness of Yah to your last breath. You declare his word to your last breath. Yes. You stand and after you've done all, come on, you keep stand, on stand. standing. That's what the anointing is on you to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when David acquired of Yahuwah, he said, you shall not go up. What? He changed the, he changed the plan. Don't go this time. Fetch a Ooh. compass. Fetch a compass behind them and come up over against the mulberry trees and let it be when you hear the sound of the gosling tree and the tops of the mulberry trees that you shall bestir yourself for then Yahuwah shall go out before you to smite the host of the Philistine. Mm -hmm. And David did so and Yahuwah had commanded him and smote the Philistines at Giva until he come to Gizar. Mm -hmm. The most high ain't going to give you the same strategy every single time. That's why you have to hear his voice. And that's what the anointing is for. The anointing is his spirit on your spirit, oh, yes. leading you in spiritual things. Because everything in life is spiritual. It starts in the spirit, moves into the natural. Hmm. Come on. Hallelujah. The scripture talks about there's an anointing on you that teaches you in the book of first John. The, the anointing teaches you all things. You don't have no need for any man to tell you do right, live right, live holy. The anointing tells you that because it's a holy anointing. Yes. But your flesh wants to hear that other oh, yeah. message. Mm hmm. That you don't have to do this and you don't have to live right. And it's all done. Just don't worry. Your name's written down. Nothing's going to change that. No man can pluck you out. They want you to tell you all the stuff, how secure you are. But don't tell you fear and trembling. <laughs> don't tell you fear and trembling. And, and the scripture says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands. So you don't want to walk contrary. You don't want to walk like the wicked. You don't want to talk like the wicked. You don't want to listen to teachers teaching you that you're weak. You 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 just have to indulge your flesh. You you just you just you just can't make it on your own. That's foolishness. When the Most High said the least of them will be like David. When he said that one would put a thousand to flight, two would put ten thousand to flight. Hallelujah. So you're not weak. You don't have this, this disability that they've been telling you. You're not a victim. You are the victor. The enemy just don't want you to walk in your victory. 
The anointing comes to teach you what I'm teaching you. The anointing has already told you the same things. Some of you right now saying, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, he already hey. he told me, yep, yeah, I remember, I heard him. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Why? Because the anointing was teaching you this before I taught this. Hmm. I'm just confirming what the Spirit has said to you. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Joshua. 15. We're going to deal with this Raphaim thing just for a moment. Hallelujah. See, we don't we understand that the Nephilim, the fallen ones, are fighting us. And their descendants, their seed, are fighting the chosen. Mm -hmm. Because we're the ones who are going to displace them. They will no longer be called the rulers of this world. We are the royal house. We're going to rule this world. And it doesn't matter what nobody say. Mm -hmm. Nothing is going to change that because it didn't change the most high's mind when he said, I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do to your father, Abraham, Isaac, yeah. and Jacob, yeah. and to Yasharal. The promise rolled all the way down to us. The blessing has rolled all the way down to us. And nothing can change that. The enemy can rage and he can imagine a vain thing. But nothing will change what the Most High has already decided and already purposed, already planned before the foundations of the earth. And the victory was already. Mm. Joshua 15, verse 8. He's Joshua 15, verse 8. He says, and the border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom unto the south. He said unto the same as Jerusalem and the border went to the top of the mountain that lies before Hinnom westward, which is at the end of the valley of the who Raphaim. Joshua was fighting the same battles y'all. Hmm. Joshua was anointed and appointed to be the leader of the people. And guess what? He came under attack and it's the same attack from the same entities and the same people groups. Y'all ain't hearing me. The same entities, they still around. Their descendants are still around and they're still doing what they've been doing. Attacking the chosen ones of the most high, the anointed ones of the most high. Let's go on. 18, chapter 18, verse 16. Who is that? Joshua chapter 18, verse 16. He says, And the border came down unto the end of the mountain that lies before the valley of the son of Hinnom, and which is the valley of the who? Raphaim. Same battles. Okay. Our ancestors fought. We're fighting the same battles today against the same entities today, against the same serpent seed today. Come on, somebody, their descendants today. It's the same battle. And the anointing that's on you paints a target on you from the enemy. He is attracted to the anointing that's on your life. He knows he can't let you break out. He can't let you do like David and break out on the enemy. He can't let you conquer and defeat his folk. Hmm. This is why he's always trying to trip you up in sin because sin disqualifies you. Because right. it destroys the anointing. That's why the Most High said, look, I, I know some of y'all going to mess up. Some of y'all hey. still hard-headed and still rebellious, but I'm going to make provision for you. If you get, if you touch an unclean body or if you do this and it defiles you and it makes you unclean, then you do this, do this, do that. And you can get back into my good graces and your anointing can be restored. Hallelujah. Same battles. Same entity, same descendant, same evil seed is trying to stop you from becoming the head not the tail, 
getting above and never beneath from getting high above all the nations of the earth. They don't want you to ascend to that position. Because that would put you over them. And you know how they already feel when you're over them. If any of you are in a position of authority over them, they start to feel some kind of way. But see, we don't care how they might feel when the Messiah says you're his chosen and you've been appointed to this position. Why are they fighting against the most high? Why are they raging and imagine vain things? It's worthless to fight against him. It's worthless to try to thwart his purpose in your life because in the end, he always wins. The most high always wins. Yahuwah don't, he, he doesn't lose battles. Remember that saying in the church, he's a doctor that's never lost a case. Never. All right, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, where am I at? All right, the book of Jubilees. Jubilees. Jubilees, chapter 29, verses 9 through 11. Jubilees, chapter 29, verses 9 through 11. It says, but before they used to call it the land of Gilad, the land of the Raphaim, for it was a land of the Raphaim, and the Raphaim were born there. Mm -hmm. Satan sowed his seed in our promised land, in Canaan, that was promised to Shem. So he went over there and sowed his people there to keep you out. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't hearing me. Oh, yeah. They were born there. They was living there. They was enjoying all the fruits of the land. All of your blessings. Y'all ain't hearing yeah. me. All your blessings. Mm -hmm. All your promises. They were enjoying. Y'all ain't seeing this today. The leadership, the prosperity, the honor among nations. They were enjoying it. Said their habitation was there and the children of Ammon and the seats of their kingdom <coughs> were Ashtaroth and Idri, Misur, Benon, and Yahuwah destroyed them because of the evil of their deeds. They were very malignant, violent, hateful. Y'all ain't hearing me. The entities and their seed, violent, hateful, malignant. Y'all ain't you. <laughs> Sometimes you wonder, you look at these nations, you see the things they've done to our people, and you wonder, how could a human do this to another human? How could how could a feeling person do this to another person? This is why. They're not of the same stock. They're not of the oh, same oh, seed. Lord. They belong to another L. They belong to the God of this world. All right. The God of this world comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. That's his MO. Mm -hmm. And his children operate the same way. They're still doing it. When they go over and destroy a country and maim and, and blow up things and kill people, then it's always a righteous war. It's always a just war. When somebody else does it, it's genocide. It's an atrocity. But it's always right when it's YT people. Y'all in here, when it's palm, palm colored people, it's righteous then. Everything they do is righteous. If they enslave you, it was righteous. It was for your own good. It was so you could learn about white Jesus. It was so you could you could be saved from being a savage and running around naked in the woods and in the forest and on the plains and all that. It's always to your benefit when they do wrong. Uh, somebody stop me because I'm going off. I'm going off the rails. Get back on the way. Where am I at? <laughs> Ooh, this, it, they were malignant. They were they were malignant, hateful, violent. And the Lord 
Yahuwah destroyed them. What's going to happen to this violent, hateful people group that's been persecuting people all over the planet? What's going to happen? The Most High Yahuwah is going to destroy them and displace them. And put in his anointed. Mm -hmm. Put in his appointed. Come on. Oh, yeah. Uh-uh. Yeah. I wish somebody would. <laughs> hey. Ooh, my, my, my. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. I got a couple more scriptures to deal with, family. We almost finished. Let's go to the book of Psalms. Hey. Let's go to the book of Psalms. And we're going to wrap this up. Psalms chapter 20, verse 6. Now I know that Yahuwah saves his anointed. Who does he save? Come on. Who does he save? His anointed. I know Yahuwah saves his anointed. Why? Because he saved me. I know he's delivered me. I know he saves his anointed and he will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Mashiach. Oh, yeah. I know for a fact now, I've experienced it now, that Yahuwah saves the ones he has anointed. <laughs> David was a man after his own heart. We know David messed up sometime, but it was the anointing that was on his life and David's heart to do what was right before the Most mm -hmm. High. We know. We've seen him save us. We are the remnant. He saved out of all that we've come through. The enemy wanted to wipe us out. The enemy wanted us to perish in the midst of our pain, in the midst of the persecution. He wanted to destroy us. But Yah said no. Psalms 28. Psalms 28. Verses 8 through 9. Yahuwah is their strength. He is the saving strength of his who? Anointed. Of his who? Anointed. He is the saving strength of his who? Anointed. Why? Because he anointed them and he will not allow anything in hell on earth or any other creature to derail his purpose and plan regardless of it some religious speaker saying he's done with israel israel no longer has a purpose it's all about the church he said i'm not done with my people i'm waking my people up so that they will realize that they are the anointed ones and they will realize that this is their hour this is being done everything that's being done everything that's happening is happening because of them yes yeah yes. destroyed david's enemies because he had a covenant Hallelujah. he destroyed joshua's enemies because he had a covenant he'll destroy your enemies because he come on Hello. he has a covenant the anointing is what the enemy is after don't surrender it. Hey, hey, hey. Don't give it up. Don't walk away from it. Don't let nobody talk you out of it. Woo. Don't let your flesh steal it. Come, Come on. on. We got to keep on keeping on. The battle ain't over. Keep on. We see the most high opening keep the door. On. He's getting ready to do some great keep things. On. He's performing miracles on our behalf. Mm -hmm. But don't you think it's over? No, the fight no. ain't over till it's over. When they put the crown on your head and you hey, sit down on hey. the throne next to Mashiach, then it's over. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Where am I at? Did I get nine? No, I didn't get nine. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. forever. That's what the anointing does. It lifts up. Doesn't push down. Takes you out of things. 
takes you away from alcohol, drugs, illicit sexual behaviors. It takes you away from stinking thinking. It takes you away from those things. Mm -hmm. So let the anointing do what the anointing does. Don't oh, mess. Goodness, don't mess up. We've seen that play out already in our ancestors. We've seen it play out. We've seen the path when they chose the wrong direction to go, that direction that took them away from the Most High Yah, away from their covenant. We saw what happens to us. Here we are in the scattered to the four corners of the earth in the lands of our enemies, oppressed, ostracized, shamed, slandered. Come on. Oh, yeah. Planned Parenthood was all about you. Yes, it is. They want to take out the anointing. They want to take out the anointed ones. Mm -hmm. Who creates an entire business mm -hmm. that's all about eliminating one group of people? Come on, saints. Mm -hmm. we, we, um, hey. Okay. Psalms 92. Psalms 92, verses 7 through 10. Let's see, let me see, let me see. Uh, yeah, Psalms 92, verses 7 through 10. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But you, Yahuwah, are most high forevermore. For lo, your enemies, O Yahuwah, for lo, your enemies shall perish and all yeah. the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. Mm -hmm. But my horn, my authority, shall you exalt like the horn of the unicorn. Mm -hmm. And I shall be anointed with what? Fresh oil. Mm -hmm. He told us that when that time came and the, the you know, the, 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 the virgins were, we're waiting on him. Those who wait on him, he said he will renew your strength. He will refresh your oil. He will refresh your anointing. He will restore your anointing. Yes. Why? Because we wait on him. Don't be like those foolish ones and have to go looking for some. Hey. Come on. You have to go try to try to find some because you ran out. You don't have to. The Most High said, just wait on me. I will do it. I will perform it. I will bring it to pass. He's the one who promised. So the promise is on him. The promise is on him to fulfill, not on you. Come on. All right. Acts chapter four. Acts chapter four. Oh, my yeah. My, my yeah. Acts chapter four, verse 27. Acts chapter four, verse 27. See, the anointing on you, when you get around people that aren't in this truth, when you get around people that aren't connected like you're connected to the most high, that, that anointing on you starts to irritate them evil spirits. Mm -hmm. It's like the, 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 the man who was possessed and he lived in the tombs and, yeah. and Yahushua HaMashiach showed up and he all of a sudden he come running out the tombs. Now, there ain't nobody bothering him, <laughs> but he come running out the tomb. What do we have to do with you? No. Why? Because he detected the anointing. The entities in him detected the anointing. And sometimes you'll get around people and you wonder, why are they coming at me like this? Why are they giving me attitude? Why are they coming so hateful? Why are they threatening? Come on, somebody. Now you know. They recognize the anointing on you. Remember Paul and the demons, the, the seven sons of Sceva, and they wanted to cast out the demon. And they said, the demon said to them, Paul, I know. Yahushua, I know. But who are you? You didn't have, they didn't have no anointing, Ooh. but they recognized the anointing on Paul. They recognized the anointing on Yahusha. Yes, 
but they didn't recognize the anointing on these folks who just got up in their own self in their flesh and figured I got the formula. I know the steps and I'll go do this myself. No, you better not step out there unless you've been anointed to do it. All right. Acts chapter four, verse 27, Acts 4, 27. And it reads, for a truth against your holy son, Yahusha, whom you have what? Anointed. Both Herod, Pontius Pilate, this is the conspiracy, folks. These are the co-conspirators mm -hmm. with the other nations. They conspired. And the people of Yasharal, some of our own folks, rejecting the Messiah, were gathered together. What they gathered together against him for? Because he was anointed. The anointing attacks the it it, it 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 attracts attacks from the enemy mm -hmm. because the enemy sees you as a threat to those that he has bound that hope those he has deceived those that he's tricked. Come on, he got them worshiping white Jesus. He got them worship European folks. He got he got us doing anything and everything to please them. The Most High said that's not the way this thing is supposed to work. You are the one I anointed. To be the head. Y'all ain't hearing me. Some of y'all won't embrace this. Some of you too, you act, you act like I'm I'm too humble. I can't you 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 don't have to you don't have to be stupid to be humble. Mm. They feign this, it's insincere humility. The most high said, You're a king, you're a queen, you're a head, you're 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 a leader. And you walk around, oh, no, I'm just poor little old me, nobody. <laughs> that's not the, That's not what the anointing teaches you. The anoint, oh, my, my, my. The anointing teaches you boldness as a lion. Don't teach you this fake, false humility. It doesn't teach you this, this, this be somebody's doormat. It doesn't teach you let people walk all over you. Where'd you learn that? From the colonizers, from Massa. You didn't learn that from the anointing. Come on. Hallelujah. Stand up, stand out. Mm -hmm. It's what the Most High said he wants his people to do. He didn't put you here to be hidden. He didn't put you here to be abused and misused. He didn't put you here right. for these folks to act a fool. He put you here to be a leader for these folks that if they rejected you, but the only reason they were able to take advantage of you was because you walked away from covenant. You walked out from under your anointing. Mm. Okay. Okay. Acts 10 38. Acts 10 38. I know. My people, I love you, my people, I love you, but I just don't want to see these folks. Talking you out of what's yours. Mm -hmm. Trying to tell you it don't matter no more. It just, oh, yes, it does. There's neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, bond nor free. You mean they tell me there's no, no slaves in the world? There's no more females in the world. Oh. So this is not what he was talking about. I mean, you might look out on the world today and think there ain't no more females and no more males because everybody's all confused. Everybody's, everybody's all mixed up. But it's still the truth. doesn't matter how mixed up and confused they are. All right. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Don't tickle yourself, holy. <laughs> How Elohim anointed Yahusha of Nazareth with the Ruach HaKodesh and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For Elohim was with him. He said he was anointed. And he said that same anointing that was on our Mashiach is on you. That's what you were intended and purposed for. He went about doing good and healing 
That's the anointing that's on you. And that's the anointing the enemy does not want in the world today. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He does not want you to manifest that anointing. Mm -hmm. You want to give the enemy what he wants. You, you want to allow him to just take it from you. Like, here, take it. It's, it's been nothing but trouble for me and my people. I just take it away. No, that's not. You're supposed to be holding fast to that, which is good. And what he has given you, what the Most High has given you is good. He said, who wouldn't want to be the head? Who wouldn't want to be above all nations? Who wouldn't want to be chosen of the most high Yah, the eternal, the everlasting father, the ancient of days? Who wouldn't want to be handpicked and selected from all the nations? Oh, hallelujah. That's why they want your identity. Because everybody wants it don't mean it's, it's up for grabs. He said, I've already given it to someone. I'm betrothed to one. I'm in covenant with one people. Hey. You want to be a part of this covenant? You got to get in covenant with them. Hey. And them folks don't like some of we. <laughs> they don't like us. Mm. And that's proven. I ain't talking, hey. I'm not talking crazy. I'm not talking about things that are not factual. They've proven to us historically they don't like us. And so you want to take away the anointing now? You want to take away my appointed position, my role, my purpose? Because you don't like me? Because you couldn't stand to have this, this man rule over you? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Messiah said if they reject you, they're rejecting me. Uh-oh, uh-oh. There you go. There you go. And usually they all think they all go into heaven. Mm. They're all going to live with Jesus. How are you going to live with Jesus and you hate his kids? How are you going to live with Jesus and you hate his children? How are you going to live with Yahusha? How are you going to explain that? There are going to be some whole lot of folk doing a whole lot of explaining on that day. Come on in here. Yes. Oh, yes. All right. Some of y'all keep fighting your anointing. Good. You don't want that. You don't. You you <laughs> see that there's some good. There are there, there are good fights. This is a good fight to be in, fighting to get what get back what is rightfully yours, like the Count of Monte Cristo. All right, all right. We're gonna finish. Let's go. Second Corinthians. Chapter one and verses twenty one through twenty two. Now he which establishes us in Mashiach and has what anointed us, has what anointed us, has what anointed us. Well, that means there's a purpose for the anointing. That, that means that there's something that he said you still got to do. Mm-hmm. Yasharal, you still got work to be done. Yasharal, you still got to fulfill your purpose. Mm. Go about doing good, healing. Come on. Speaking the Basora, the good news. Declaring the kingdom of your father. Hey. Come on. Declaring there's a new sheriff in town. You, you have a responsibility that's on you and an anointing that's on you. The oil has been poured on your head like Aaron rolled down to your beard and you, you, you've you still got work to be done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a sweet smell. That was a very fragrant anointing oil. Why? Because the Most High wanted them to smell you coming. He wanted when you pass by, they say, oh, that's one of them because I could smell the anointing on that. That anointing oil was so fragrant all in my nostrils. It lingered in the room even long after they were gone. Y'all know what I'm talking about. All right. All right. Them folks know when you around. 
Them folks know that you're different. Them folks know that you're special. They, they, they know. They've tried everything to make you think you're not special. Right. They've tried everything to make you think that you're nothing and nobody. They've mm -hmm. tried everything and it still ain't working because now you've come to realize why they do what they do because they belong to your enemy. They are not your friends. Absolutely. Enemy is as an enemy does. Oh, you know them by their fruit. Yes, yes. You know them by their deeds. And they oh. didn't done some dirty deeds <laughs> and they want to stay they clean. That they're pure, they're holy, they're righteous. Y'all better talk to me. Ooh, yeah. Somebody's lying. Somebody ain't telling the truth. If you go about incarcerating people, enslaving people, and ostracizing people, Jim Crowing people, black coding people, sundown towning people, drowning cities, bombing cities, and you mean to tell me you're pure, holy, and righteous in the eyes of the Most High Yah? Somebody better come again. Anyone that the Most High selects is going to be attacked. Anyone that he anoints and appoints for a purpose, the enemy wants to thwart that purpose. That's what he's been doing. He's been conspiring with the nations against us. <laughs> and y'all say, boy, if we attract that kind of attention, if all hell stands up and want to want to take you down you must be something mm -hmm. you must be something special for the attack that came against you your anointing must be great oh, yes. what's he so afraid of what's got him having the night sweats what's got him having the tremors because he sees a people waking up he hears he's over there in the valley of the dry bones he hear him rattling coming together, speaking the same thing, thinking the same thing, one mind, one accord. He said, oh, this is something, this is terrible. When they were divided and when they were disjointed, it was, it was a beautiful thing to see them destroyed, mm -hmm. to see them unable to come up. But looky here. Now they're starting to join together. And they're going to start fighting like one man, fighting in unity. Oh, yeah. and the enemy is terrified. He's losing sleep. He's losing sleep over you when he hears your prayers. You're praying different. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> You're praying different. I don't know about you. I'm praying different. I'm singing different now. My mindset is different now that I know who we are as a people. It changes everything. They say, oh, it don't matter. It changes everything. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Who has sealed us and given us the earnest of the Ruach in our hearts. Turn over to 417, 2 Corinthians 417, same book. For our light affliction which is but for a moment, works for us mm -hmm. a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Yeah. Our what? He said, look, this anointing I put on you and the glory it's got you bound for, mm -hmm. what you have to go through to get where I'm taking you is worth the price of admission. It's worth the price of pain. It's worth the price of persecution. It's worth being ostracized. It's worth everything that your ancestors went through. All the hell that they had to go through to get to this heaven on earth, oh, yeah. to get to this paradise on earth. Oh, yeah. He said, it's worth it. It's, worth it's a light affliction Ooh, it's worth yes, it is. compared to what oh, I've yeah. got yeah. for you. Oh, yes. Are you understanding, there, family? There the worse. fact that you are anointed mm -hmm. is going to attract the attacks of the enemy. The yeah. fact that the Most High put his hands on you and says, I have a purpose for you. There is a calling for you. That's enough for the enemy to come at you. 
and try to get you away from the most highest purpose. Because whatever Yah is doing, he doesn't want done. Hmm. So when you're in pain, if the pain stops you from hmm. fulfilling your purpose that hmm. you were anointed for, then the enemy says mission accomplished. If persecution stops you from speaking about the king and the kingdom and Yasharal, his people, and, and the truth and all this wonderful stuff you've learned, if persecution <laughs> stops you, then the enemy says, mission accomplished. If people leaving you and walking away from you and abandoning you and leaving you alone, if the loneliness causes you to stop, then he's neutralized your anointing. And that's all the enemy wants to do is while you're here, I need to neutralize you. I need to stop you. I need to prevent you. Because, see, it's easier to kill a lion cub than it is to kill a full-grown, mature lion. This is why he tries to take us out as infants. Y'all ain't hearing me. Pharaoh mm. tried to take us out as infants. Herod wanted to take us out as infants. Why? Because he knows when you grow up, into the fullness of what the Most High has for you. That anointing is going to be so powerful, he won't be able to stop you. Hmm. So he's already missed out. He didn't get you as an infant. So now he has to try to get you, your mind on other things. He has to distract you. He has to get you thinking about your pain, thinking about your persecution, thinking about your past. He has to get you bottle, bottle, bottlenecked and, and, and caught up and clogged up and so you can't move. You're paralyzed. Mm -hmm. hey. So you won't be able to engage the enemy. Can't hear from the most high. You're hearing from too many other places, too many other sources. Hey. But I say, family, we got this. Oh, yeah. I say the fallen ones can fight, but they can't win. They can go into prevent defense, but our ancestors overcame. They came into the promised land. We will overcome. We will come into the promised land. Israel as a nation will be saved. We will be delivered. We will prevail because we can't fail with the anointing that's on us. It's an anointing that says victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, family, that's all the script I have for you today. I know there were a couple of scriptures I wanted to visit over in the book of Leviticus. But I think I've uh, overstayed my welcome this morning, starting to lose my voice a little bit. But if you go back and you read those scriptures, they're going to say the same thing. You're anointed. You're appointed. You have a purpose. And that purpose is to be a battle axe and a weapon of war. For the most high Yah. The enemy wants to neutralize you and make you useless in the hands of the most high. Are you hearing me? So this is what we're going to do, family. We're going to keep on praying. Wednesday night, we're going to keep on praying. We're going to keep on getting together, planning, talking about what the most high is leading us to do. And we're going to execute like David. We're going to listen for the plan coming out of the voice of the most high. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to act. We're not going to sit there and just listen. We're not just going to be hearers. We're going to be doers of the word. Yeah. Okay. Hallelujah. When we see one of our ministries being attacked, we're going to stand with them. We're going to pray with them. We're going to support them. Hallelujah. Because the enemy wants to take them down one by one. Mm -hmm. He wants to shadow ban them. Come on. He don't want nobody to hear them because faith comes by hearing. He don't want nobody to hear him. He wants to silence our voice. And we say, no, we're going to get on the rooftop. Come on. How many How many y'all on the rooftop with me right now? We're going to be on the rooftop. And we're going to be shouting it from the rooftop. They take away this platform. We'll find another platform. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> yeah. Woo yes, 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 Father. Yes, Father. 
Abba Yah, we thank you. We praise you. Thank we you. magnify your holy and majestic name. We thank you, Father, for choosing us. We thank right. you for selecting us. Sure Father, we appreciate all that you've done sure you to purify us Father, as your people. We thank you, Father, that as we head into these next coming days and months and years ahead, Father, however long we have left, we want to live out those days serving you, Father. We want to live out those days bringing your name glory on the earth. Father, help us to reach those, Father, that our eyes are still blinded, they're still trapped in the snare of religion, that the enemy still has them held captive in yes. sin and iniquity. We pray for them, Father. We pray that you would release them, set them free by the anointing that you have placed on your people. Break about the bonds, Father. Break the chains. Let them come freely into your presence to worship you and to glorify you as their Elohim, as their covenant-keeping El. And we will never forget we will never turn our backs, Father, on you again. We will always lift up holy hands. Yes. We will always profess your name. We will never be ashamed to own you never. before all never. men. We claim you as our L. We claim you as our king. We claim you, Father, as our covenant keeper yes. and our kinsman redeemer. And we bless you. We were Baruch hey. Hashem Yahuwah. Amen. 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 Well, peace and blessings, family. Thank you for spending this time with me today. I hope to see all of you back on Wednesday night. And I look forward to the Judah Pride meeting on the 28th. So our members, we're going to be talking about these feast days. We're going to be dealing with how they relate to us in these last days. So I hope that you will join all the members. I hope you will join us on that time as we share in the word of the most high. Yeah.